Hello, Mob Thogers. Welcome, welcome back to the game. Welcome back to the Accuser Like a Dragon. Last time, we finished off Ichiban Confection. But this time, we're going to meet with the Chief. See, let's pursue the story for a little bit. Chief. Hmm? My friend's got some questions about the day I was dumped in this town. Yeah. I want to know why you didn't just abandon Ichiban and dump him at a hospital. If you don't mind telling us, I'm sure we'd all appreciate it. Mm, I see. Fine. I'll tell you. It's as good a time as any. Uh, uh what? There's an old tradition in this homeless camp. A responsibility passed down through the chiefs for many years. What responsibility? On occasion, when we're asked, we dispose of bodies. What? Bodies? Yeah. There's a Yakuza family from Kamurocho who pays us to do it. They're called Arakawa. Arakawa? Seriously? They, uh, was this going on while they were still Tojo? I don't know every detail, but yes. The arrangement existed at that time. That's crazy. It existed before I started living here. We've dealt with all kinds of bodies, whether they've been shot, stabbed, beaten, no matter how nasty. We dug holes and buried them under garbage. Who knows how many are there now? Back during the bubble, we got one every month, or so I was told. Since I became chief, there's only been three. Damn, Arakawa the assassin. But there's one more secret rule. It applies to anyone the Arakawa bring here alive. Ah, uh, secret within the secret. Great. What happens if they bring someone alive? We're supposed to give the person medical aid then let them go free while pretending they're dead. What? Uh, what's up with that? In the criminal underworld, there's always people wanting to fake their own death. Gamblers, guys on the run, anyone who's afraid someone will hurt them. They send people like that here, and we honor the secret agreement. I think it might actually be a service the Arakawa family provides, but obviously they don't advertise it. So it ended up being a very rare event. Is that agreement why you saved me? This live body rule? <sighs> you got it. What sort of guy dropped me off here? I mean, probably just someone from the family. I had no reason to check or anything. The guy lugged you out of the trunk of a car. You were covered in blood. He paid me and left. Didn't say a single thing the whole time. He knew these guys were single. What the freak? I was shot, so he planned to. Did he kill? What? I'm sorry, Ichi. This is intentional? You have to die. I'm counting on you, Ichi. Huh? What the? Hmm? After Arakawa san shot me, I think he said something. I think it was. I'm counting on you, Ichi. What would that even mean? No clue. But the more I think about it, the more I'm sure he said that. Look, Ichiban. What? I don't want to dash your hopes or anything. When you were dumped here, you were on death's doorstep. You're only alive because everything I did went exactly the way we needed it to. But it could have easily gone a different way. I know you want to trust Arakawa, but... I think Arakawa-san had to shoot me. All the other Yakuza at that meeting were watching him. Huh? Never mind. You don't get it. Forget I said anything. So he only did it just to prove a point? Is that what I'm understanding? 
Ichiban, it's about time we go to the tower. You got one fight with the chairman, H Ushino, right? Oh, freak, I forgot all about that. See, everything always goes back to the tower. The lower you in this hole, let's see what this guy's up to. We haven't seen him in a while. Alright, let's talk to our main man again. Oh, Kaz good. Thanks so much for last time. No worries. Looks like you've really hit it, hit it off. Happy for you. Yes, on that note, I have something I want to discuss with you. I know it'll be early, but I was thinking asking her on a date. You getting a good place for a date? I have no experience and not really sure where to take her. It'll be too early to say, but he's acting a whole lot more positive than he used to be. That's good. Mm. First date, huh? Okay. Theater. Yeah. Take her to the movie. You guys can talk about it afterwards, see what you both thought. Arigatou gozaimasu. I see. Yeah, then we keep the conversation going. Thank you, Kasuga. Oh, yeah, since it's the day, you guys should see one of these romantic films. Romantic, okay. I understand. I'll go ask her right away. Look your eye. Clear cover, son. Oh, what? Your face. Are you alright? <gasps> oh, Kiryu. I'm fine. Just a bump in something, that's all. Doubt. Where did you come right up? Yeah. Oh, well, I. Well, no, yes, thank you, but I actually have something to ask you. Mm -hmm. Oh? What is it? I know. Uh, would you like to go to the movies with me? What? Is that a no? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just surprised. I'm definitely not a no. What? <laughs> you changed, Kyrie. You're totally different from when I first met you. You think so? Hi. Yes. I could learn a thing from two from you. Let's get reported in the movie. My man. I look like we just randomly... That went well. <laughs> Girls at yes, we're meeting a Seagull Cinema around it. Alright, so we're getting her a gift for a date. I wanted to ask you for, for my... No. Nah, you don't need me anymore. Huh? You know her better than I do at this point. I'm sure you're feeling something. Just keep doing what you're doing. Ooh. Cool. I guess I do know her a little better than now. Yeah, okay. Is that the end of this one, Fada? They're meeting at Seagull Cinema. Oh, come on, it's not over yet. Alright, so... I wanted some storyline stuff today because we have neglected it. So I'll see you guys Dear, that wasn't enough time. Uh, the miracles. God bless. I found another side quest uh, randomly. Excuse me. Do you need help crossing the street? Well, of sorts. Yes. Looks to me like the signal changes pretty quick. Why don't I just carry you over? No. And while I do appreciate your kindness, that won't be necessary. Are you sure you're going to be okay like that? I'll be fine. You see, I made the decision to walk with my own two feet until I'm dead and gone. Heck, I won't even get in a car unless I have to. Well, at least you're sticking to your guns. Yes, and that's why I intend to cross this street without any assistance. <laughs> okay, then if that's the case... no, oh, it's green. Alright, Umeko, you can do this. Here we go. Uh. Uh. You, you got nowhere. Uh. Oh dear, how many times has it been now? Yes, Granny's been at this for a while. Why don't you go to a different crosswalk? Maybe without a signal. If I did, that means that's a victory for this here crosswalk. And I can't let it win. I guess. Oh, I do wish these old legs of mine were quicker. That's a quick thought I had. I wish I was carrier, but I doubt she'd go along with it. Huh. You know, I'd like to help, but I'm fresh out of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you worry about me, son. I just think I'll head home for the day. Oh. Mm. Mm, slow 
slowest walker ever. That is a concern. I mean, that... Why the random... I keep saying this game's a meme. You know why? This game is, in fact, a meme. It's a little bit you know? But... things in between major things and it's like I don't know how long this game's even gonna be on Game Pass which is a small concern man I have no problem buying it at this point I do enjoy this game a lot I'd like more money first personally but that's a whole different story for the reason I said a little bit of a break from the last week so then again you guys don't know about that before two or so weeks and I was way ahead YouTube things for a little bit because you know kind of a creative burnout keeping up with my games. And I was trying to finish the song, and that's been a challenge when it's not because I'm not happy with the constant. But that's not the point. Ooh, totally cool, Chris. How many of those do we have now? That's my real question at this point. And we were just here for that side quest, too. Alright, let's get for the ambush. I went ahead and got started. You sure you don't mind treating me? What? Are you actually able to pay? Wish I could, but I don't think they take this. You don't sound like you're gonna relax during this meal. Depends on what you say. Hopefully I'll relax enough to enjoy the duck. So, uh, how do you know Arakawa-san? I'm on the edge of my seat here. It wasn't long after the war the counterfeit bills started being produced in Ijincho. It was top secret. Only the heads of the Seiryu clan and the Liumang, plus some officers, knew about it. Outside of that inner circle, they also had to hire people to smuggle the bills. Smugglers? And one of them was a traveling actor. His name was Toshio Arakawa. He was Masumi Arakawa's father. What? One day, he came to us saying he lost an entire suitcase filled with a hundred mil in fake yen. No excuse in the world could have saved him. A mistake that grave required the Seiryu clan to make an example out of him for the other smugglers. <laughs> but remember, only a few people at the top even knew about the counterfeiting. It wasn't a task they could hand to just anybody. So I, being next in line to inherit the clan, was entrusted to carry it out. So did you... you actually... Yes. I killed Toshio Arakawa, father of Masumi Arakawa, in this very place, 40 years ago. But I had no idea who was in the room with my target. By the time I learned it was his 14-year-old son. It was too late. I had to go through with the hit, knowing this boy would see his father die. To make my guilt even worse, later I found out why Toshio lost the fake bills. His wife and her lover had stolen them. When those two fell into the ocean and disappeared. Their corpses were never even found. So Arakawa-san lost both his parents, one after the other. And his only other friends, the theater troupe, disbanded soon after without their leader. Masumi Arakawa became a drifter, along with a few other actors. They couldn't trust anyone, so what other path was there for them? Except becoming Yakuza in Kamurocho. So that's why he became a Yakuza. 
hardly any choice. So, okay. Explains a little bit. Arakawa joined a low-ranking family in the Tojo clan called the Hikawa family. Life wasn't easy for him there. They were the kind of family that took hits without thinking twice. Really? Yes. So they were always in need of ways to dispose of a body. Masumi Arakawa was tapped to help with that. And he was extremely cautious. To do it, he started coming all the way to the homeless camp in Ijincho. Really? Even though the family was based in Tokyo? Why? Well, truthfully, he wanted an excuse to come to Yokohama. Because it would afford him opportunities to hunt his father's killer. I see. So Arakawa-san was using the homeless camp to dispose of bodies all the way back then. Indeed. As for his hunt, he researched Yakuza and criminals every time he was here. All he started with was a single clue. His own childhood memory of the suspicious waiter he saw here that night. Eventually, seven years after the murder, I received an invitation to come here. He signed his invitation Matsumi Arakawa. It was a bold declaration, and I knew immediately the running would be futile. So I came here, alone. I didn't even bring a bodyguard. Why the hell not? Well, to put it simply, I was prepared to die. But, I mean... In this line of work, there are no good ways to die. And I can think of worse ways to go that would not give that boy the justice he'd earned. The memory of what I'd done to him never left me, you know. It was always like a small bone stuck in my throat. Hmm. Like he was sitting right where you are now. Here? Yes. He didn't look a day over twenty. But his eyes had that hard, flinty gaze of an old killer. I couldn't help myself. I told him everything. I told him why I killed Toshio Arakawa. I even told him about the secret counterfeiting. I figured I was dead anyway. He had a gun in his hand, and all he had to do was pull the trigger. But he never once interrupted me. When I'd finished, he slowly stood up. I stopped him as he turned to leave. Didn't you come here for revenge? I asked. And? What did he say? He said, If only you had ignored my invitation, then I could have shot you in the back. Then, he left. Uh, boss. In 1984, the 10,000 yen bill changed from the face of Prince Shotoku to Yukichi Fukuzawa. By that time, Arakawa had found his own Yakuza family. So I sent him a gift. What was it? A fresh batch of crisp, fake bills featuring Yukichi Fukuzawa. They were defective prints with nothing on the back. <laughs> Not exactly legal tender. Wait. That's... that's it. Then how was that a gift? It's hard to explain. If I had to say, it was out of gratitude. Sure, but for what? I should have died that day I met with Arakawa. I would have been right. And yet he spared me. Not only that, but he lifted a terrible weight from my chest. Furthermore, it's not an exaggeration to say the equilibrium among the Ejin Three continues to this day because of him. Wow. 
I owe him an unfathomable debt. And one day, I, I must pay it back. The defective bills were how I chose to communicate the sentiment. The counterfeiting secret is Ijincho's weakness. And it was only thanks to Arakawa that the Ijin Three could continue to secretly wield that power. But of course, that means if he ever feels like it was a mistake to let me live. He could use the fake bills to unravel everything I've built. The gift wasn't the bills themselves. They were leverage. What? I actually wrote something on the back to that effect. Neither justice nor mercy should tip the scale. It means that those in power must reward and punish where necessary. I felt it was an appropriate message. I suppose the writing has faded at this point. Whoa. Wait, that... So that's the whole story. Up till this moment. But now I'm sitting across from a man holding one of those fake pills. Which, of course, is a message from Arakawa that only I could understand. The message is, Masumi Arakawa sees you as a beloved family member. Arakawa-san thinks of me as family. He would not have placed that bill in your pocket lightly. Do you see its significance now? After everything I've told you? <clears throat> there is almost no doubt in my mind that Arakawa did not want you killed. So he didn't shoot you out of malice. He shot you so that you would be brought here, be saved by the homeless, and eventually meet up with me. Do you see? <clears throat> That's everything I can tell you. That's plenty. Thank you, Chairman. I see it all now. I always kind of figured. You did? Well... It's your move now. I've only told you what I know, so... It's okay. That's enough. I trust you. <laughs> well, I don't hear that often. Yeah, neither do I. Not even from my friends. But those friends are trustworthy to me. And so are you. I believe everything you said. And... My faith in Arakawa-san is coming back strong. Kasuga. Yeah? Are you a blood relative of Arakawa's? <laughs> no, it's not like that. I see. Well, he must have been happy to have such loyalty as yours. As proud as any father, I think. I don't like this. What are you doing here? Oh, we're gonna eat duck finally? Oh. Well, guys, next one, y'all can still like a dragon. We continue on. I'll see you then. As proud as any father, I think.